My slightly upgraded car can compete in drag races, but it's slow. That's why I want to unlock the junkyard from Jaquist so I can get a manual transmission along with other upgrades to my car. Hey guys, it's Trias here and let's start our day off. So first things first to unlock the junkyard is we check out what is my friendship rating with Jaquist. It's a 15, so we need a 25 to unlock the junkyard. So let's just get kind of close to our magic number of 25. So after talking to Francis, Jacquez, my mom, find the world differential and front bumper, and aggressively expanding my maple syrup empire, I'm only one tick away from unlocking the junkyard. And I'm not kidding, this took me over two hours to get me here, and I also died in the process. So here we got the front of the shop, let's walk on in because, well, it's open, it's past 8am, and Jacquez, give me access to the hey, junkyard. Austin. Hey, I like you, kid, you should have a look at my scrapyard. Well, thank you, finally you give me the chance to do so, and my boy, Norman. So what to do, Norman? Keep this to yourself, but I don't really like Giles. Damn. The guy that finds the lost stuff. Now, since it took me 10 days to do so, let's fill up the truck and the freaking gas can so we can get this over with. And while we're at it, let's stop at the Maple Syrup Federation because of my aggressive Maple Syrup Empire expansion and all that good stuff. I spent, or not say spent, but I used a couple dozen of the Maple Syrup like Sprout Packs and the Tube Rollings and all that good stuff. So let's buy another pack of these. Uh, no. No, it ain't, Eric. So what do you gotta say? Here, Maple Syrup Federation, we accept this and that, so I don't want whatever you're selling me other than these two right here. And also, since I'm over $1,000, you're probably thinking, like, how I got $1,000 when I was at, like, a couple hundred dollars or something like that. Is that's because of the Maple Syrup barrels that I sold recently. I sold two in the last video and then an additional one off camera, so I had, like, $400 for the week. In the second week, I had $600 deposited to my bank account at the top left portion of your screen there. I was originally at like $1,200, but with all the spending of poutine, maple syrup, and all the general spending, all this good stuff, now I'm down to like just over $1,000. So where are we at in terms of the trees? The home generator not running, so a 37, which is kind of fair. So hold on a second. If I were to run the, the home generator, will this consume the sugar water or not? Because you know you need this to run the pump as so, but I don't think you need to use the generator to consume this. Okay, so are all these trees over here matured? So I know I got these right here that are needed to be connected to the maple syrup ne network that I got going here. So connect this bad boy, and this is the last one I got right now, which I think brings us to 40? 40 trees. Tank is full. I agree. So we're pretty much going to use both the sap sprouts and the tubing rolls, like, no problem, because these trees were planted like a week ago, and these are now fully matured, so where are we at in rolls? We got four rolls to go, and six more sprout packs, so yeah, <laughs> it's going to pretty much be in no time, we're going to be using both of these up for these now matured trees, they were once little saplings, now they've grown up. All right, the last of sprout packs that I got with me connected to this tree, and we got a crap ton of trees more to go. So grab the tubing rolls and see what we can get. So here's tubing roll, four more to go, connect to this bad boy, connect across the frickin' street right here. And what's kind of funny with the tubing roll right here, if you got the tube that's connected, like, across the road or something like that, you can run into it as, as a person and also run into it with your own truck, car, or whatever. You could run into the tubes like, like it's no tomorrow. And there goes the rest of the tubing roll. Ditch it right there. Where are we at? So we're at a 47, which is, according to game, fair. And the barrel's full. The reservoir's still going off. Let's put some more wood in so we can make more of that maple syrup because we're at 150 degrees. That ain't good, folks. All right, let's put our maple syrup barrel in the back here. Let's sell this here bad boy. And probably by tomorrow in game, I'm going to go to the junker, which is probably going to take like an hour drive in the game to go there, which I know you got the manual transmission, the new tires, and a bunch and bunch of radios to sell to this kid named Raymond for like a couple hundred dollars or something like that. All right, Mr. Truck, please stay there, Kobe. Finally, I made one. So that's $200. We're at a freaking stimulus check of $1,233.68. That's one cent off from being a nice number. So despite being around 2.30 p.m., let's go to bed and go to Junkyard first thing in the morning tomorrow. So before going to the Junkyard, let's load up all the rusted parts we got going here with the brake rotors and wheel bearings from the Koenig so I can make a little bit of more money selling the rusted parts right next to the Junkyard, which there's like a big old bin where you can throw all your metal parts, like all rusty parts or whatever, and sell it for some cash. 
And also what hit me at the junkyard is that there is a tire changing station that you could use for free at the junkyard compared to paying $15 at the gas station. So we're going to take it all the four tires out, let all the air, and change the tires, which are going to be some like all-season tires or something like that that we could use for free rather than these janky old winter tires. So we can get that extra grip when we need it. So before heading to the junkyard, let's talk to Francis so we can wish our luck on going to the junkyard for our journey. So we just completed the second floor of my garage. So much room for activities. Yes, you said that once you built my garage, dude. Can you have like a different dialogue request or all that stuff, man? Like say something different other than that. That's what I mean. So here is the junkyard right in front of me. So according to the map here, what I did was make a right, hang a left at a sharp little corner, do some rallying, made another right, and kept going straight. So first things first, let's get the junk out of the bag and put it in the bin right here. So how much does this weigh? The old sway bar is 10 kilograms. Okay. So the sway bars are kilograms, both the front and the rear. What a deep three-point shot. Same thing for the brake rotors and the other brake rotor. Short. Get that rebound, people. So how much is this? So 80 kilograms, which should be $160, right? Yep, $160 for 80 kilograms. So according to game and how this works, so a kilogram equals $2 if you were to sell metal parts in this bin here. And also, let's unlock the gate. Well, good to know that's part of my to-do list that I had to complete, which is to open the freaking junkyard. This boy right here. So first things first, let's take a rusted ass wheel. I think we just put it on like this. Oh, like that. Well, let's get all the wheels over here and find the all-season tires, which should be in this, like, like tire pile that we got right here. I think it's this one? Yep, here's our all-season tire. First one. Let's cheap out by getting some all-season tires and our sports tires. So tire. Shots fired. And to put the new tire in, rim goes first, tire goes second, and... Squeaky deaky majiki kiki. The machine is working or already working. Wait a bit. Shots fired volume two. The buggy parts. Oh, cool. I forgot to get the buggy parts in the junkyard. Same thing with the bumper and the transmission. Here's the other tire. Cool. Uh, it does it automatically even though I just freaking obeyed it. Here's the other tire. There's one more somewhere, right? Aha, here's the last one. So put this back here. Rusted wheel. Slam dunk. So finally, all of our four new tires are on here, rather than these janky studded winter tires on here. I mean, they got a good tread, but they're not really that good for on the road, like actual road to pavement and stuff like that, compared to these tires. So first things first, we got the front bumper strong for the old truck. So this is the old truck that's always in the junkyard as so, but I never knew that they got the front bumper. I think this is probably part of the old truck update that they put this guy in, this bumper. Well, well I'll take it. We got OEM. We Ugh, ah, come on, man. Well, let's take the tires off again and put the new rims. <laughs> Jesus, man. Okay, new rim, new tire. Here we go, here we go. Now we have to not look at the rusty-ass rims on the side of our car. I think you could sell the rims. Am I right? Yeah, 13 kilograms. Let's sell the rims right now. So we don't have to carry these around. So selling four of these rims, this is 52 kilograms, so $104 right there. So we made like a couple hundred dollars by just being out here. That's nice. All right, finally, the tires are done. I believe the radio is in this car, isn't it? Uh, yes, here's the radio for the Koenig and the steering wheel that's OEM. I think this is, yeah, with the airbag. Because with the car that you got, that you start off with, you get the same steering wheel, but no airbag whatsoever. And even with the radio, like I said, you can sell this to the guy named Raymond for like, what, over $100 per radio. Which, I mean, let's find all the radios in this, in this uh, junkyard right here. It's got to be a car with an interior like this, so there's going to be a radio right here. And this is going to be a very tedious process. A radio right there, and 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 a piece right there. I think it's the bumper. So let's just get the radios in the car. There we go. So the radios, what's kind of unfortunate is that once you pull out a radio like this, they're not going to come back and regenerate a lot of good stuff, so you can't make, like, infinite money by pulling out radios and sell it to Raymond at night when the street races are going on. So this is pretty much just a one-time deal, and yeah, bumper front. So like I say, it's a one-time deal of just making money at the junkyard by selling the radios to him. And my, my freaking truck bed is 110% full, I swear to God. 
Oh, this car's got one, two, three radios and the buggy pop Four! There's one in the hood? Are you kidding me? And I also notice there's another radio, not a radio, but a buggy part up front in the driver's seat. Which I think that's the drivetrain? What is this? The uh, steering and controls. Okay. Damn, they really put this car in the trash can and that's my transmission right there. Alright, tranny. It's a manual transmission that is unique. Cool, let's put this unique transmission in the back. And weigh the truck down. So that's one half of the junkyard clear with the radios. Now we gotta do the same thing on this side of the junkyard. So it's probably gonna take me another in-game hour to clear all this up. So we got the radio. No. Radio, please. Yes, sir. So this should be the last radio in this junkyard. So let's put this in the bag and see how many radios we got. We got like a crap ton that we get. Oh, oh. so the back. <laughs> <laughs> radio, 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 big dadio. There's a ton of these bad boys in the back. Sheesh. And I think we're all done here. So, e brake, ignition, on, go home. All right, kids. We're home with my ghetto ass setup with the jack stands. So let's ignore that and start unloading the stuff. There goes my tire. Stay. Good boy. And for the old tires here, like the winter tires, I think this is like a tire, like, stand thingy or something like that. So let's put the tire up there. Let's put the old winter tires up top so we're not going to, like, litter these, like, on the ground summers, just like that. Oh, well, Mr. Front Bumper. Guess we gotta put some bolts to install this on here. And for the bucket parts, let's put this on right now. Yeah, volume 1. Let's get the others right here. What is this called? The wheels. Okay, wheels. Wait for it. Yeah. So front... Bumper strong. It's rusty, and I think this extends the bumper out or something. Let me see here. And oh my god. Look at all the radios for Raymond James Financial Stadium. And did I put a radio up front? Yes, I did. And the steering wheel too. So let's do the steering wheel in a little bit. And the radio, we can pretty much install like right now. We can hastily, yeah, do it like that. And for the front bumper, we got four of these bolts, which goes on the bumper. I'm going to see what this is like to see if it's worth putting the heavy bumper on or keeping the stock one that comes with the game. All right, remove the front bumper. There's no rust right here. <laughs> so front bumper strong. Oh, this is like a push bar. Oh, okay, but not really my style. So here's the fun part again. Lock all the nuts, our bolts on each and every tire for our new rims, our new all-season tires, and all that stuff. I don't think we're gonna mod the car in one night because we got the maple syrup, our poutine, and our energy meter. It's starting to go high up in here, and it's about nighttime. It's 1,830 hours, 32 hours right now. I think I'm gonna install all the tires right here and do the rest of the modding by tomorrow. So let's do all the tires and mod the rest tomorrow morning. All right, it's a new day, and I forgot to install the front bumper properly. What type of bolts do they use? Do they use 12s? I think they use 12s. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, they use 12s. Okay, I think there's only two of them, so you can screw, uh, insert one right here and do the same thing on the other side. It's these rusted-ass bolts that came when starting up a new game. Now, for the steering wheel, oh, it's a single bolt. Okay, that's cool. So just unscrew the bolt and, yep, remove. It's the Koenig steering wheel OEM, no airbag. Yep, there's no airbag, so let's put the no airbag boy. Right here. Okay, this logically doesn't make sense. We got the bolt right here and the airbag, so... <laughs> Hold on a second, we're... We're screwing into the airbag? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that ain't dangerous whatsoever, huh? So let's replace the differential. This is the open differential, if I recall correctly. So they could just unscrew these two, and I think there's a couple more you gotta, oh, excuse me, unscrew two. Yes, you do. I think it's the, yeah, and the entire drive case right here, the entire rear portion of the drive shaft, you gotta unscrew two. And we have to do the same thing for the transmission. So it's pretty much should unscrew anything related to the transmission, which includes the rear differential and the transmission in general. So the entire drive shaft and all that good stuff. All right, let's start with the rear differential. So remove... Yep, yep, here we go. So we got the rear differential. Yep, it's the open differential. Okay, and where is my welded differential? This is pretty much like a mid differential. It's not the world's best, but it'll do for most things related to driving all that good stuff. And 
with the differentials, in terms of, like, handling and everything, I know in terms of, like, the general handling and everything, like, if you were to pull, like, an e-brake turn or something like that, it's, it'll be difficult to pull that off because, well, it's a strong limited slip differential because, well, that's how it works and all that good stuff. For an open differential, it's pretty easy to do that, and I believe a welded differential, it's a tad more difficult to do it. Because mainly the differentials, it's just, like, the general handling capabilities and all that good stuff. And for the transmission, please... Okay, here's our transmission. The auto shitbox. Yes, this is a Swedish transmission. And now let's install the manual transmission, which I think it's a five-speed manual. And also, since I got all these new tires, we can see right here, they're flat. Pump these boys back up to 30 PSI on all four wheels right now. All right, got all the tires pumped up. Let's put some metallic paint on this bad boy. Um... I don't know how it's gonna work with all this rust out here. I mean, we got this big ass, like, rust spot that we got going here. If I used a rust repair kit, this should, like, go, like, pure white or something like that. So it's like putting metallic paint on this quarter panel. Okay, and 255. Sheesh, I think this is a bit too extreme. How about the hood? Is this extreme? Sort of. I mean, if I regret putting on the metallic paint on this car, I could pretty much clear it, no problem. But the first thing I gotta do is either wait for my boy Roger to get the clear metallic paint job, like paint application on here, or unlock the shop by spending $5,000 to that man. And let's transfer all the radios to the back of this car, because I believe at Fridays, we should see Raymond in the back of the lot where we could sell all this to him to make a very, very healthy profit. So putting in the last radio, we got a buttload of radios in the trunk. <laughs> and oh my god, this damn thing is so bouncy, bruh. Is it like the shocks that are worn out? I think that's what they are, the shocks are worn out. Now, let's go for a drive with the Koenig with the new manual transmission. It starts up, the e-brake is up, we got our gear shifter. Nice, and it almost stalled out. Wait, is that uh, oh yeah, I forgot my boy Roger's here, so let's pull over and get some parts from him and probably go back to the shop, uh, not the shop, but my house, and install a few more mods to this car. So what do you got for me, Roger? We got $465 right now. I need $5,000. Like I said, again, $5,000 to unlock the shop right next door. So what can I afford from him? Let's get the shocks. Okay, shocks, adjustable coilover, about $800 in total. Hmm, why not? I mean, they suck right now, so let's unsuck once we get back to the garage. So we're going to skip the performance manifold and the other sway bars and the brakes. Well, first... Let's see what the gas station has to offer me and how much it costs for the ABS module to replace it. All right, Jock was my boy Norman. Hey, yeah, what do you got for me? Yes, yeah, nice cool, weather today. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Merci. Have a good one. So we need some maple syrup. Good choice. French Canadian approval. I thought it was going to be oh, very good one or a good choice or something like that, but no, he did. So the brake calipers are $125 each, so $250. The $300, oh, sheesh, well, we gotta buy this because it's saying abs because, well, like we see here, we got no abs. We gotta go to the gym and work out seven days a week. So getting the shocks out, wait, um, where are the other parts at? Wait, 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 where are the other two parts at that I just bought? Where's the other shocks, man? Do I have to freaking backtrack again? Oh, here's the ABS module. That came out the door. Are you kidding me? So where is the other shocks? Is it in the car or... Dude, where the hell did it go, man? Oh, it, it... What? What? Okay, we didn't have to go far, so it landed like it dropped off in front of the garage on my property. That's weird. And again, to access the shocks, we gotta get... Oh, this is 97%. Get access to both of the wheels. I think I have to do the same thing for the others in the back, unfortunately. So we're gonna only install two good shocks up front and keep the bad ones in the back until we get some good shocks in the back in stock again. I think I gotta, like, wait, like, another couple days. I think it comes back Sunday, and it'll have more of the shocks available to purchase yet again. All right, now it says remove for the top, so if I hit remove... There we go. So let's put this bad boy over here. OEM blown. Yep, it blew out just like my nuts on a Friday night. So the adjustable coilover goes here. Drop down the brakes and all that good stuff. Here's my adjustable spanner doing all this. And boom, let's do it for the rest. 
Now for the ABS module, is it like somewhere, I think it's right here, this little bolt right here, and I think that is the module right below it too, so let's do that, remove, there it is, so we got the Koenig ABS module broken, let's put the broken guy over here in the junk pile and put the new guy, grab it and put her right inside the engine bay is where I'm at. And of course, the ABS light should not come on anymore, yes, we cured the problem. Now let's go back into town one more time to do a drag race with the new manual transmission to see what it's like and also sell all the radio parts in the trunk and make a profit off of this. I'm probably guessing with all the radios in the back, I'm probably thinking we're going to be getting like maybe $2,500 or $3,000 once we sell all of them to Raymond. And Raymond and the gang should be coming out in just a couple of seconds here, so... Yep, there's his car, and there's the rest of the gang, so let's back on up and sell the radios to him. So back, back, back it up, says freaking Lil John and the East Side boys. Get out from the freaking driver's seat and talk to him. So Raymond James, how's life? Do you have any women to show me? Nope. Unfortunately, I don't. But I'll show you the radios I got from the freaking junkyard. Here's one. 110. Uh, thanks. Good stuff. Thanks. Good stuff. Thanks. Good stuff. Thanks. Good stuff, thanks, um, and, uh, good stuff, thanks, and good stuff, and noise, thanks. So we're already $1,100, we're over a stimulus check right now, and, <laughs> this is some easy money that we got going here, making big buck from a freaking junkyard just pulling out all the radios. And look at this, $2,000, we can get up to, like, 3000 maybe, what the hell, uh, okay, good. Oh, so we can probably get up to easily $3,000, maybe $3,500 selling all this to him. This dude's gonna be broke by the time I'm done up in here. So we got a couple more to go. Let's see, two more? Oh no, three more. Okay, two, one, zero. 3,520. No, 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 no. 3,000. Uh, yeah, 3,000. No, 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 no. Shoot, 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 shoot. Damn it. Oh, man. Uh, $3,740, I think we, we made. I think we're all good at the radios, right? Seems like we are in the queer, so good. $3,700 we made selling all that to him, which we're at $4,195, but we're not done yet. Let's win a bit right now. Anthony, how's it going? I don't care. It sucks. Go to Sawmill with my boy Michael. Anthony, how's it going? V6 swap the car. My boy Mike, looking good to gay. Or today, dude, stock vehicles are so boring, but you can do so in this game. You can convert your car to stock rather than being on lace or racing spec. Okay, how's your day going from Luke? Tom, good day. <laughs> And also, I bought this little digital speedometer from Roger, seeing that this car only measures in kilometers per hour because, well, I'm an American, I need to know what that equals in miles per hour. Okay, line her on up with the manual transmission. Go to neutral, brake, stop moving to start the countdown, and neutral drop. Good, and we're off on the line. It's a drag race we got going here. Go to third person. I'm ahead of you because my door is open, and it being a, a manual transmission, an automatic, we're really in front of my boy Mike. 18 seconds, 400, um, wait, 42,001 SC milliseconds. And I don't think we're gonna be doing a drag race against Luke because unfortunately my freaking energy meter is about to be maxed out. If I go home after doing the drag race, I'll probably die and my car will be out in the middle of the street or something. So we have to go home and call it quits, unfortunately. So that'll do it with Mon Bazoo. So finally in this game, I managed to get the junkyard unlocked after spending more than two hours just trying to get unlocked. My boy Jock was spending 10 in-game hours to make it happen. It was a pain in the ass to make it happen, but finally we were able to swap the transmissions and make this car even better to drive compared to the janky-ass four-speed auto that I've dealt with for quite a while by doing some drag races or just driving it in general. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.